that we always study hard and pray even harder because health will give you everything in your life. Welcome to the class of economics. That is your own class of economics in Shakti's Academy. We will discuss the economics for 12th standard. It's our first tutorial. But before going into technical details, we need to understand only one thing. That economics is extremely easy and it's very, very interesting. We use economics in our day-to-day -day life. We daily use economics. But the only thing is, we don't know we are using economics. Okay, now we will discuss how do we use economics. We can take an example. Here we have taken an example of a student. He is a student like you and maybe some other student. He is having this work. He is all ready to go to school. And he is getting certain amount of money from his parents. Take for example, he is getting 5000 rupees as his pocket money. Every month. For this whole month, he won't be getting any money. Any other money from his parents. In economics, we call this money as resource. Right? Resource. So, with this money or resource, a limited amount of money. He is having this money as a limited amount. He wants to purchase certain things. See, as a person, I may have certain needs and wants. As a student also, you may have to purchase certain things. You may want to purchase or you may need some things. So, these may be his needs and wants. He may want to purchase um, certain branded clothes, movies. He may want to go on movies, trips, parties. And he want to purchase a car, branded clothes, books, snacks, etc. So, the important question now arises is, will he be able to purchase all these things with this 5000 amount? The answer is absolute no. Because this amount is limited in comparison to these needs and wants. In this situation, what you would have done? Right. You would have made a choice. So, he will choose certain most important items what he wants to. As a student, most probably, he wants to purchase certain books. He wants to have some snacks also whenever he is hungry. And he may want to go on a movie because these are the things he can afford. Or canceling movie, he can go for party. So what he is doing over here, he is making a choice to adjust his money. So this act of making choice to manage his funds or limited pocket money is known as economics, right? So I hope you have got a gist that you have got an idea that we use economics in our day to day life. Economics for 12th standard comprises of three parts, part A, part B and part C. Part A consists of your introductory macroeconomics that comprises of five units, namely national income and related aggregates, money and banking, income and employment, government budget and balance of payments that overall will give you 40 marks. Part B again comprises of 40 marks and that comprises of 3 units, development experience and economic reforms, then current challenges, development experience of India and its neighbors and Part C comprises of your project work and that will give you 20 marks. Overall you will be getting 100 marks for the syllabus and I hope you all will score 100 marks. If you keep on learning economics day by day with simple tips and in easy manner. Now, let's start with our introductory macroeconomics. Now, we need to understand the meaning of macroeconomics. But before that, do you want to know who gave this term macroeconomics? Yes, Professor Ragnar Frisch. Professor Ragnar Frisch gave this term macroeconomics. Now, macroeconomics comprises of two terms. Macro plus economics. Here, the term macro has been taken from Greek term macros. 
M A K R O S macro. This is a Greek term, and this means large. In context of your macroeconomics, large means study of economy as a whole. So, under your macroeconomics, you will be studying concepts like GDP, national income, total employment, total income of the whole population, total population of the nation, welfare of the, all the people of your nation, etc., etc. Just like price level, source, inflation, deflation, reflation, and all. So, if we take, for example, economy of India, economy of India, or say, economy of America, that will come under the study of your macroeconomics. We are not studying the individual components. We will study economy as a whole, the total aggregates, some sum totals of all the individual units. That's why your macroeconomics is also known by the name of aggregative economics. Aggregative. Aggregative means the sum total. Sum total of the individual components, just like individual households or the people make the total population. If I am being studied, that is microeconomics and all the population, all the people of country combined together are studied, it's, it will come under your macroeconomics. So, got it? Now, we will see the definition of your macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is the branch of economics which studies economic issues and problems at the level of economy as a whole. We can see here economic problems. What are studied? Economic issues or problems. Economic. All of you know what is economic? Pertaining to money or related with money. Anything which is concerned or related to money, comprises of money, monetary issues will come under your economic issues. Now, problems and issues at the level of economy as a whole. That means we have just now discussed the total aggregates. National income, GDP and all will be studied under your macroeconomics. Now, we will see the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Now, we come to a very important question of difference between macroeconomics and microeconomics. This is a very important question and you may get this question for 6 marks. So, now Let's discuss that. But before discussing that, I want to ask you something that which are the telecom companies that provide you telephone services or mobile services? We all of us use mobile phones. Then we can name a few of them right here. We have your BSNL, BSNL. Then we have your IDEA. We have Airtel. Tata, Docomo, then we have your uh, Uninor, and couple of other uh, service providers provide us telecom services. And together, all these firms form our telecom industry. Telecom industry. Now, we use different kinds of cars and locomotives, vehicles. So, all the vehicle producing firms, all the vehicle producing firms form our locomotive industry or vehicle industry. Firm 1, you can say Firm 1 plus Firm 2, Firm 3, like Mahindra, Chevrolet, etc. Then we have our sugar industry. Our, we have our hotel industry. We have our um, that is textile industry producing clothes and all. We have our food and beverage industry. Producing drinks and all. So we have named a few industries over here. And we have our 
एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर सर्विस सेक्टर सर्विस सेक्टर दैट यू मे कॉल अवर टर्शरी सेक्टर ऑल्सो टर्शरी सेक्टर एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर इज नोन एज प्राइमरी सेक्टर सर्विस सेक्टर इज नोन एज योर टर्शरी सेक्टर सो ऑल दीज इंडस्ट्रीज टेकन टूगेदर एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर टेकन टूगेदर एज सर्विस सेक्टर टेकन टूगेदर फॉर्म वॉट फॉर्म योर इकोनॉमी दिस इज वॉट दिस इज योर इकोनॉमी राइट वी हैव अवर इकोनॉमी नाउ all the people of the nation form what they form population of the nation all the people maybe from different states we have 29 states and people of 29 states form our population the population and the whole economy of the nation form your nation so we have three point components over here we have our population we have our economy comprising of all these sectors that is industrial sector agricultural sector and services sector p e n p for population e for economy and n for whole nation so the subject we study is your economy your population or the nation or the economic problems or the economic issues or the decisions taken by them are studied under your macroeconomics simply it's as simple as that and if you are interested in studying only one component maybe any component you may take bsnl or you may take any agricultural unit just like a milk producing dairy plant that is agro based industries again or any hotel you can take take for instance you may take bsl i have just told you or study of airtel right if you are taking either bsl or study of airtel this will come under your microeconomics right macroeconomics is a whole thing study of economy as a whole or study of population as a whole or study of nation as a whole but microeconomics A study of only one component, any one component. Maybe your textile industry, maybe any farm over here, maybe anything in economy. See, we have a very big nation. It's a subcontinent, and you will take any component. Likewise, in other nations also, if you are studying a very small component, tiny component of any economy, then that will come under your microeconomics or scope of microeconomics. And if you are studying economy as a whole. all the derivative concepts and economic problems and issues that we come under your macroeconomics so now we can discuss our macroeconomics and microeconomics here macroeconomics has been taken from the greek term macros m a k r o s this is a greek term which means large large means big aggregate so this is large or not so macroeconomic studies large concept put into whole economy or nation or population now microeconomics on the other hand comes from the greek term micros m i k r o s micros which means small right small that means tiny okay the small part study is your microeconomics and large study of an economy is known as your macroeconomic study now we have study of aggregative concepts you can say now study of aggregative concepts like your this aggregate this is sum total or sum totals sum totals this is sum total or not we are taking everything over here and we are study of small components individual components small or individual components components 
of large economy. Components of large economy is known as your microeconomics. So I hope you have understood this thing. Now we will take certain examples. Here we have formed a code P E N. P for population. E for economy. And N for nation. So study of population as a whole, economy as a whole, a nation as a whole are economic decisions which relates to earning or spending of money or earning or uh, expenditure of money is known as your macroeconomics, right? And here we have who are the small components? We have individual persons. Individual persons that means like you and me, I am an individual, you are an individual, right? Individual persons, households. Households that means a house or that is running through one income, households that comprise a few people, households that is group of individuals, individuals or group of individuals. Now we have our firms that is individual firms, single firms, right? So here they are see very small components, right? So we form a code over here, I, H, F. And here we have P, E, N. So, we have formed two words. P, E, N. Study of P, E, N is your macroeconomics. A study of your I, H, F is your microeconomics. And we have one thing is the A for aggregates. Right? In macroeconomics, we have A, macro. So, it stands for aggregates. And I stands for individuals. Individuals. Now, there are certain examples for that. Concepts like your GDP, national income, price levels, like inflation, deflation, inflation, as we have discussed earlier also, will be discussed under your macroeconomics of our whole population. And here we will discuss any single form, any individual, any household, like production and output of pricing of single firm how it sets the prices or expenditure and income of one single household or how a person spends his limited income will also come under microeconomics so remember only one thing PEN and IHF PEN for macroeconomics and IHF for microeconomics I hope you have understood this topic and for further updates please press the bell icon and subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed the channel till now. Thank you.